First of all, I just want to take a moment to thank you all for coming out tonight. Uh, this is a fantastic crowd, and we're proud to see so many students represented here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start off with our normal business tonight. Our first up is, yet, first up is our guest speaker, uh, Ms. Vanessa Siegel. She is the current ABS president. So everyone give a big round of applause for Vanessa. Good evening, everyone. Um, I first of all, I want to thank you all for having me. Like you said, my name is Janessa Siegel, and I am the current president of the Association of Black Students. And just to give you all a little history, ABS is a recognized student organization here on campus that was developed to basically be the voice for the African American students here on campus. Since its creation, we have become the umbrella organization for the majority of African American RSOs on campus, and we are also the governing body for the AAPF. Um, this year, our main goal was bridging the gap, and basically what bridging the gap is, is developing a relationship between the Association of Black Students and multiple other RSOs here on campus. And particularly, we really wanted to bridge the gap between ABS and SGA. This year, SGA has done a phenomenal job of bridging the gap with them and us. Um, they have sent Ms. Natasha to our Council of Presidents meeting to talk to our Council of Presidents. We had Curtis Frizzell. Um, he came to our Black City of the University and he actually uh, spoke to the students. And we also had uh, Cody come into the Council of Presidents meeting talking to our students. And SGA has also donated money to in increase the DVD collection in the library to include a lot of culturally diverse movies, which is something very great so a lot of students can see a lot of multiple movies that are extremely diverse. And we also nominated Mr. Frizzell for the Bridging the Gap Award, which he will be receiving at our first annual African American um, uh, banquet. And actually, it is open to all students, so we would love for you all to come to our first annual African American banquet. It's going to be on February 28th at 6 o'clock in the multi-purpose room. It's free of charge, so all you need to do is just pick up a ticket from the Cultural Center, and you will be able to come, so we would really love that. But outside of that little plug, um, we have really, really worked hard to bridge the gap between ABS and SGA. And it has been a wonderful year with SGA, and we certainly look forward to continually, continuing to bridge the gap on, throughout the future. Another goal of ABS was having more African American students get involved on campus. <laughs> By the end of this year, we do plan on having more African American students in SGA, SAB, SOS, and all of the other RSOs that are here on campus. We really want to make a presence, we really want to get more students involved, and we really want to bridge the gap here on campus. So I really would like to thank you all for inviting me to have me come and sit in on your meeting. And if you guys need anything from ABS, please don't hesitate to ask. Thank you all. Thank you again, Vanessa. Now moving on with our meeting, before we get to the main event tonight, uh, we do have a little bit of Senate business to take care of first. Uh, thank you all out there in the crowd who are not senators for bearing through this, but it will go by quickly. Uh, first off, I think I need a motion from the floor. Mike Shane? I'd like to make a motion to amend the orders of the day to allow appropriations of the class to be heard. Okay, so first up, we're trying to put the appropriations of class at the top of the orders of the day. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. All opposed? Any abstentions? Seeing none, motion passes. Uh, so first up, we're going to talk about the appropriations request. We have Appropriations Chairman Christina Heisman. <coughs> um, we approved $150 for the orthopedic surgery interest group to have a, some residents come in and speak to them. We approved $750 for the Black Student Health Center to have a residence come in and speak to them. We approved $750 for the University Rocketry to um, build a rocket. We approved $750 for the University Rocketry to go to the... <laughs> and we approved seven hundred fifty dollars for the Indian Students Association to hold an event. All right, so those are our four appropriations requests for this meeting. Uh, any discussion on any of those? Seeing none, move to the question. All those in favor of approving the appropriations requests as they stand, please say aye. Aye. All opposed? Any abstentions? <coughs> Motion carries. Congratulations, to the appropriations. Uh,
And just as a quick aside, I know we have a lot of RSOs out here tonight. If any of you all would like to request money from SGA, just go to our website, uofllsga.com, and look up the forms. We have plenty of money, and we can help sponsor some of your items. So just let us know. Moving on for the night, next up we're going to go on to executive cabinet reports. Uh, first off, Curtis wanted me to give a little bit of background about what the Senate's been doing so far this year. Uh, honestly, over the past three months I'm in medical school, I've been on the residency trail quite a bit. And almost invariably, my involvement in student government has come up. However, it seems like every time this happens, I have to justify the validity of our organization. The sad fact is that most student governments across this nation are a little more than figureheads. However, U of L student government has always been something more than that. And after this wonderful, productive year that we've had so far, no one can challenge the fact that we are, in fact, a vibrant student government association. After a very productive summer, you senators out there today, tonight, uh, sponsored nine pieces of legislation as an unprecedented number at our retreat. And even though we hit the ground running early on, we haven't given up yet. Over the course of this year so far, we sponsored 21 different resolutions and passed them that are important to students like all of you. Stating all of them right now would be a little bit tedious, however, I should name a couple of them. First of all, we pass an act to reduce the amount of waste created by student government and reduce our carbon footprint. Eventually, this will be our world, and it is high time we start acting like stewards of it right now in our youth. Additionally, we pass an act to provide more access to on-campus housing for Greek organizations. We believe in student government. The more students we have living on campus, the more vibrant and diverse our community can be. And finally, we passed the largest overhaul of our constitution and bylaws in decades. After weeks of editing during the summer and numerous Senate, numerous Senate and Executive Board meetings that lasted well into the night, uh, we finally have a founding document that is worthy of the best student government in the state of Kentucky. We simplified a lot of the language, we strengthened the separation of powers, and we made the Senate more accountable to itself. However, most importantly, we pass a piece of legislation that allows for better record keeping across all of SGA so that future officers of our organization will never have to question what their predecessors did. As Henry Clay said, the Constitution was made not merely for the generation that then existed, but for posterity. Unlimited, undefined, endless, perpetual posterity. The truth is, however, that without the rest of student government and the unprecedented amount of cooperation we've had this year, none of what we've done would have been possible. The Constitution and bylaws revisions would not have happened had it not been for the tireless efforts of the McReynolds Court this year and all of the time they spent helping us with them over the summer. Additionally, the amount of work that they put into the election rules this year far eclipses any past court in the history of SGA. And as for the executive branch, many pieces of legislation that we sponsored this year first came from the staff members in the top four from the executive branch. And additionally, on top of that, the amount of cooperation and communication between the executive and legislative branches this year has been greater than any in the past. And we can thank much, uh, attribute much of this great cooperation to our SGA student body president. When you first walk into his office, it's immediately apparent the most important thing in his life are his friends, family, and co-workers, because pictures of them are everywhere. However, there's one picture that strikes my attention every time. It's a picture of, Cur picture of Curtis with the past two SGA presidents. You see, he's been involved in student government and advocating for student uh, rights for years. He started out as a task force freshman and was subsequently the only freshman to ever take part in a runoff for a top four position. The next year, he served as our academic vice president, and now this year, he is the pinnacle of our student body on campus. Throughout his time at UofL, he's had many uh, championed many causes that are dear to students. The A-plus initiative, for instance, which sought to make that four point of the GPA calculating system more fair for all students. Additionally, he worked to abolish the diploma fees, because we in student government believe that after four years of paying increasing tuition, he deserved that diploma. And finally, he worked on the Building Our Nest campaign, which sought to bring in more outside funding for student government and student activities to help put on more events for all students on campus. In addition to that, he's also worked hard to champion diversity. He's worked with the Kentucky ACLU to further LGBT rights across the state of Kentucky, and he worked with the Louisville Asset Building Coalition to help the poverty-stricken residents of our own city. And, as you just heard a few moments ago, he's this year's recipient of ABS's Bridging the Gap Award for helping to connect minority groups on campus with other organizations. However, his strongest asset as our president is the fervor with which he attacks his job. Robert Heinlein once said that being privileged to work hard for long hours at something that you think is worth doing is the best kind of play, and Curtis embodies this. 
There have been many times in the past when I've had to email him or text him or call him late at night, well beyond normal business hours, and he's always been ready with a quick response. You see, the job of SCA president is not a 9-to-5 job. It goes on all the time. You can't go to class or go out with your friends without having to engage in your job because you're constantly surrounded by your fellow students, your constituents, and it's your job to make sure that their voice is heard. This is much easier in times of peace and prosperity, but with the Great Recession in full swing, college tuition rising, and cuts to higher education, this has made his job very difficult. In spite of all this, however, he's never given up fighting for students, and has always handled every situation with the poise and professionalism you'd expect from a true leader. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my personal honor to present to you today my friend and colleague and our student body president, Mr. Curtis Frizzell. Thank you, Speaker Mick, for that wonderful introduction. You have done an amazing job this year, and our Senate and our student body are lucky to have had you serve. If this was a United States presidential administration, I'd say we'd be the greatest in history. We've cut taxes, created jobs, cut politicians' pay, um, annexed new territories like ELSB, and fixed the deficit. But all jokes aside, this has been one of the most successful and effective SGA administrations in history. And I would like to begin by sending a huge thank you to the members of our Student Senate, our Supreme Court, our Executive Staff, the U of L Administration, the Task Force Freshman Program, Student Activities Board, and my Executive Cabinet. Your work this year has been tremendous, and you have been more than excellent representatives for this student body. This year was and is a tremendous year for our SGA. We have been able to overcome obstacles, accomplish goals, and make this campus a better place to live and learn for our student body. One of the greatest obstacles this year was our budget. The Student Government Association was faced with a budgetary situation it had never seen before. This year began with a $30,000 deficit, which had to immediately be corrected. To correct this, we had to make several cuts. Our senators and other members of SGA are to be commended because we have had to cut pay for every member of SGA next year so that more money can stay in the hands of the general student body and go to work for student initiatives. In order to help our budgetary situation, we have sought new sources of revenue for SGA. Some of these include University Mobile, a text messaging service that texts deals to the Louisville community while providing us with an alternate source of income. At other universities, it has raised, raised as much as $180,000 per year, and we hope that, that will be the amount for the University of Louisville in the future. Another includes Dorm Vault, a dorm accessory storage service that has the potential to raise another $100,000 for our student body. You'll be proud to know that your SGA has spent less money on frivolous items, such as food and cups and koozies and t-shirts, um, than ever before, and has used that money wisely to start new programming for all of our students here at UofL. The complete revision and strengthening of our Constitution was both an accomplishment and an obstacle. All branches of SGA worked together to completely revamp and update our Constitution and bylaws allowing for a more efficient and structured SGA to better serve the student body. While this process was extremely lengthy, it was well worth it. Thanks to the leadership, uh, leadership of Speaker Mick, Senator Grodick, and Chief Justice McReynolds, our Constitution is stronger than ever and is ready to guide decades of student leaders. Communication is always an obstacle that we must face and overcome every single year. Your SGA has made great strides in improving our lines of communications both to and from the student body. Our SGA has recommitted itself to transparency and keeping students in the know of SGA initiatives. With the amazing guidance of our videographer John Turner and the rest of our communications team, our Cardcast web show has become more informative, higher quality, and better than ever. We have completely revamped our website, making it more up-to-date, user-friendly, and accessible than ever before. And our website is now easily navigable 
and has been an excellent tool thus far for our student body. Events such as SGA Cares and Platform have seen huge turnouts and have been fun and exciting events through which we communicated initiatives and concerns to and from our students. With the initiative staff member Austin Lopesavero, we created TalkBin so students could always text in questions and be well informed. For the first time in history, every RSO at our university has a direct line of communication to the SGA president through our President's Council, an assembly of every RSO president at UofL. Your SGA has committed itself to fostering diversity and ensuring that all our students are able to live in a vibrant and diverse campus. We have spent $2,000 to provide new movies in the library dealing specifically with minority issues. An SGA's communication team helped create the Pride Week promo video. I am proud to say that I am the first SGA president to speak at the Black Univers State of the University address in years. And I would like to thank Janessa for her invitation to speak. And I would also like to thank the Association of Black Students and the Black Diamond Choir for awarding me the Bridging the Gap Award this year. Finally, we have begun our work on creating our social change center here on campus. There's been a task force created with the vice presidents of our university, and the outlook for the project is promising in the future. One of the greatest accomplishments is one that has eluded SGA administrations for years, about 30 years. For years, graduating students have been forced to pay a diploma fee, an extra $25 to $45 to receive their degree they've already earned. This year, with the help of our provost, Shirley Willingans, we were able to abolish this fee, saving students over $85,000 annually. The university administration has established the capital campaign, known as charting our course. Your SGA this year took the initiative to create the student version of the campaign called Building Our Nest. This program will reach out to current students and young alumni to raise money for actual student initiatives, which can include anything from endowing student scholarships or helping RSOs with programming. Many of the facets of this program include our Young Alumni Walkway Program and the Honors Graduate Donor Program. Both of these are expected to begin in fall 2012. Your SGA has worked to create new and protect current student space on campus. We have seen great strides towards our new recreational center. We are expected to break ground soon, and the facility should be open for use by the student body by the end of 2013. This SGA worked with Miller IT and was able to get 12 new computers installed in the Davidson Commuter Lounge for use by our commuter students. Our SGA, with the help of Student Affairs, is currently working on a plan to remodel the former recreational portion of the Student Activity Center into a greater student space. From conference areas, meeting rooms, a banquet hall, and countless other areas for student use. With the help of Student Affairs, we were able to lay down and pass a plan of support for an expansion of Greek Row, providing houseless organizations with homes and attracting even more members to our Greek community. With over 300 RSOs on campus, SGA and student activities saw a need for a better management system. This year, we switched to OrgSync, a service that allows each RSO to have their own free website and social media tools, as well as a wide range of other features that will aid in operating their organization. To help build leadership with among those 300 RSOs, we also started the Cardinal Leadership Certificate with the help of Student Affairs. Your SGA has worked tirelessly this year to ensure that college is affordable for our students as it can be. We have created a partnership with the Boone Project, specifically helping our international students with their taxes. Additionally, we partnered with the Louisville Asset Building Coalition, an organization that actually is here on campus in Davidson Hall, helping students file their taxes for free. Through these partnerships, we have created a free tax service for all students that make under $50,000 annually. These partnerships will continue to aid our student body for years to come. In order to make scholarships more accessible to students, we have provided a scholarships page on the SGA website that informs students of every scholarship offered at the University of Louisville. And SGA has created an affordability program to help students better learn how to spend and budget their money in an effective way. 
Thanks to Senator Kerry Magley for working so diligently on the program called College on a Budget. It is sure to help countless students as the program grows over the years. Many of us in the room just got back from this year's Rally for Higher Education. And thanks to help from staff members like Maggie Grove and Spencer Scruggs, I am proud to say that it is the most successful rally in the history of the program. I'd like to congratulate the Cardinals for the appreciation of music for having the highest turnout at that rally. Not only were we able to have our voices heard in numbers previously unheard of, but U of L, with the help of Representative Keith Hall, introduced a resolution to the Kentucky General Assembly to help keep tuition low and set our state back on track to being the state where education pays. My senior advisor and author of the bill, Max Morley, is to be commended for his work with Frankfurt and on behalf of all students. He has been beside me every step of this administration, and for that I thank him. The Barefoot Campaign, which stemmed out of the University of Louisville, saw overwhelming support, including some legislators commenting on its brilliance and even taking off their shoes during the speech to show unity with the statement, Education Cuts is Kentucky's attempt to fulfill its own stereotypes. This is, however, not the end of your SGA's work in college affordability. While we have managed to accomplish large steps on seven of seven components about college affordability, and completing five of the seven in the Student 2020 Plan, we still have a lot of lobbying in Frankfurt to accomplish the final goal of making college affordable for all students. This year, a new branch was added to SGA. We have adopted the Engage Lead Serve Board, our new official philanthropic arm. This board will also work to engage new student learners and leaders and bolster our student body as a whole. They will focus on civic engagement, student leadership, and community service. Freshman lead WLCB and the Kentucky Higher Education Lobbying Program and many other organizations will be housed here in the future. ELSB already includes several organizations such as the University of Louisville Dance Marathon, Student United Way, Green Uni Initiatives, and many other service RSOs. As you can tell, a great deal has been accomplished this year. From the mandated student 20 plan, many, many items have either been marked as accomplished or in progress on our website. However, our administration did not stop with just the 2020 plan. It was with the great help of my amazing staff that new initiatives and partnerships were started like Els Bells, the Diversity Mixer, the Greek Luncheon, partnerships with SOAR, and countless other initiatives that my staff took it upon themselves to start. My Chief of Staff, Olivia McMillan, has been a source of support for me in some of the hardest times of this administration. This job is a lot tougher than many give credit. She has helped pick up responsibilities when the administration and student body needed her. Additionally, without Vice President Sangoy, we may not have managed to get through the entire Constitution in a timely manner. Without President Howe, we would not have heard students' needs for large and small things in the academic realm, like the need for a sophomore general education class or even movable dry race boards in the library. Without Vice President Monaco's diligence, we may never have had a successful meal plan transfer system that can be utilized by all students. The Vice Presidents helped define the President, and I want to thank them for serving by my side and always challenging me to serve better. While many people deserve recognition here tonight, I would like for my executive staff to please stand. Please join me in rec please stand. <laughs> please join me in recognizing the complete diligence of this group. So our greatest question tonight still remains. What is the state of the student body? In many ways, our student body is strong. We are seeing more students active in RSOs than ever before. We are seeing less apathy across the board and more students engaged and involved in our university, including the highest record turnout to the Rally for Higher Education. We have seen a great number of accomplishments of the 2020 plan, the plan which the student body mandated. Our graduation and retention rates are up. We are sending a greater number of students into the world with degrees. 
but in many ways, our student body is struggling. We are paying higher tuition than ever before. We are facing a daunting job market, and our SGA is running out of money for improvements, and thus cannot help to provide the campus atmosphere that we desire to have. And finally, and probably most devastating, our basketball team has had more injuries than any other D1 school. <laughs> but it's nice to know that, we would, that that would never stop a true Cardinal. The outlook is not entirely bleak. We have our higher education bill, the first step in, direct, in the direction of correcting these budget cuts, these tuition hikes, and reaffirming Kentucky's commitment to higher education. We have our athletics bill in the SGA Senate, which is set to establish and enhance spirit traditions here at UofL and bring our student body closer together as Cardinals, improving our campus atmosphere, our athletic programs, and the Cardinal spirit. This bill, spearheaded by Jeff Lamb, Senator Bolzarth, and Senator Penny, will create the Cardinal Captains Program, the official student spirit squad. It will establish cards in flight, the official march from tailgating area at Old Cardinal Stadium to Papa John's Cardinal Stadium. It establishes Cardinal Gear Day, a day that sees Cardinal fans awarded with Cardinal gear as encouragement for knowing our all hell, our fight song, and our alma mater. While this may sound like a farewell speech, I assure you it is not. This administration still has four months of solid work ahead of us, and your SGA looks forward to helping students as much as possible, right up through our final days in office. There is still much work to be done, and we intend to do it. At the moment, we find ourselves once again in the middle of the campaign season. As several of my VPs stated, I know we all are having those uh, Vietnam-style flashbacks right now. But it is important for all students to become involved in the democratic process of our Student Government Association. So please become informed of the candidates. Come out to the executive debate tomorrow night at 8 o'clock in the Humanities Auditorium. I encourage all candidates to run clean campaigns, not bog down the process with petty allegations, and to move our SGA forward. Students are not apathetic, so listen to their complaints and help them with their problems. I could continue the speech by detailing even further work from SGA, but I am compelled to talk about one final thing. Of all the roles embraced by this administration, the one we approach with the greatest purpose and the greatest energy, and the one to which we have the strongest commitment, is our role as student advocates. We never shy away from tough issues, from issues like the Student Activity Center, strategic planning, affordability of tuition and fees at the state level, the Student 2020 Plan, the spirit of higher education, and various student services we've articulated with reason and principled positions. Still, despite all that we have done this year, there will be people in the community, in the community that will say we have not done enough. And they are right. There is always more work to be done. As a former SGA president once stated, after all, the most important work SGA does is realize behind closed doors in meetings with individuals three times our age and three times as educated. But time and again, the student government has stepped up, held our own, and firmly established ourselves as equal and active participants in the university's decision-making process. I am increasingly proud that this administration knew and has never lost sight of our purpose to faithfully and competently represent the interest of the students. I encourage whoever follows us to always understand this purpose and make it their central focus. Do not let our work this year be in vain. Let us always continue to strive for what is best for Louisville and our student body. Thank you.